Okay, today I'd like to introduce our clear paper uh, which done by Yuan last year in his internship. Uh, we will report this paper at the conference held at uh, the end of uh, this month. And before starting my talk, uh, I would like to briefly introduce uh, my motivation why this investigation is related to our team's uh, objective. Machine learning models have uh, complementary developed uh, with uh, perception and cognitive sciences uh, in humans and animals. For example, as shown by the team, uh, how infants acquire a world model based on their intrinsic motivation give insight to the learning progress hypothesis for lifelong machine learning. Another example is convolutional neural networks, uh, which are inspired by visual neural processing in humans and monkeys. And there are many examples of the opposite directions. Recent neuroscience studies have strongly rely on uh, machine learning models to explain the neural responses. Also from our team, uh, Maxim and I try to uh, import a methodology of uh, maximizing trainees learning progress uh, for human attention training. So machine learning and human sciences are developing in a complementary way. And uh, I believe such complementary development is very important for better scientific advances. And today's topic is uh, related to the state when this interaction is highly developed. At an early stage of this loop, the models uh, were simple, so it was easy to evaluate how the computation worked because you know all parameters and all processing in the computation. But uh, nowadays, the models used in the, in the invest investigations are very large. And so you cannot check all the computation parts. So the question is, how can we evaluate uh, the functional representations uh, machine, learn uh, machine models acquire? For the questions today, I'd like to suggest evaluating machines like humans. That is, uh, I'd like to suggest importing human science methodologies in the machine learning community to evaluate the functional mechanisms of machine learning models. From today's talk, what I want to tell you uh, is just one message. Uh, what I want to say is uh, when you evaluate complex unknown systems, unknown system, task performance uh, doesn't always imply a specific mechanism state. This might be a too natural message, but uh, I feel uh, that many people misunderstand it, especially if we are not uh, used to dealing with complex systems evaluations. So I will come back to this uh, slide at the end of the talk. Okay, so let me start to introduce our clear paper. The title is uh, Language Biased Image Classification, Evaluation Based on the Semantic Representations. An important key keyword is uh, language, uh, which largely contributes to recent advances in machine learning. Uh, by the way, yeah, I try to put uh, the subtitles of my speech after this slide uh, as much as possible, uh, not at all due to the time <laughs> limitation. So. Language is not only a fundamental tool enabling humans to communicate uh, with each other. It also shapes other aspects of perception and cognition, ranging from visual processing to abstract thinking. Analogous to this human ability, recent machine learning models have also utilized language to support the training of visual skills in machines. For example, the OpenAI team introduced a clip model consisting of joint learning of language and vision. It efficiently learns a visual concept from natural language supervision and can be applied to various visual tasks uh, in a zero shot manner. More specifically, the clip architecture consists of an image encoder and text encoder. An image encoder is based on a ResNet or vision transformer, and the text encoder is a language transformer model. 
the model is trained on a large data set of image text there who is a contrastive objective uh, that is uh, it runs uh, to align text uh, align text and the image representations uh, for each pair the pre-trained model can be used for various visual tasks in a zero-shot manner for example when the model is applied for the image classification task the land text encoder or synthesizer dataset classifier are from label text combining how with uh, combining the label with a sentence like a photograph of label <clears throat> sorry and the pre-trained image encoder output a representation vector for the input image and text classifier decide which label represent is the closest to the image embedding There are so many applications uh, using uh, descript models. This model was reported last year, but uh, has already been cited uh, by more than uh, 800 research papers. Uh, one recent application example was reported by the same uh, OpenAI team just last week. It's called uh, DALI2, and then uh, can create images uh, from text prompt. In this case, uh, the prompt is a uh, painting of a fox uh, sitting in a field at sunrise in the in the style of Claude Monet. This, uh, and then the image is out of, out of uh, from this prompt. And then uh, you can see that this is very nice, uh, impressive output. And then this model is based on the combination of the pre-trained clip and then uh, diffusion models. Uh, and, and then uh, there are many, many uh, as an example uh, uh, the, of this uh, uh, language supervision uh, uh, examples. Anyway, uh, the clip model uh, is considered that uh, uh, it efficiently runs a visual concept uh, from natural language supervision. But while language uh, contribute uh, to the acquisition of general visual abilities, uh, it has been uh, also known that uh, its abstraction can produce bias recognition uh, for humans. Picture word interference is such a phenomenon. When human observe an image coupled with an incongruent, uh, incongruent uh, category word, in this case, uh, the dog image with uh, cat or uh, incongruent uh, category word, the image categorization is disrupted by the word. In particular, uh, this interference effect is strong when the image category is similar to the superimposed word, suggesting that the shared semantic representations of images and words disrupt image categorization. More specifically, uh, it has been considered that uh, multiple mechanisms uh, mediate uh, this effect in humans. First, when participants observe word superimposed images, an activation process synthesizes the semantic representations corresponding to the superimposed words and the pictures. This semantic representation is shared for pictures and visual words. So when the word is semantically similar to the picture, uh, these activations are similar to each other. Based on the uh, representations, a selection process decides which possible activation is answer for the current task. Since the activated representation is shared across words and pictures, these dual activations can confuse the decision in the selection process. Similar to the effect in humans, recent uh, joint model of uh, language and vision also show recognition interference. For example, the clip model can answer the image classification correctly for a natural image. So for this image, uh, the clip can answer this is apple. But it has been reported that the classification is disrupted uh, by superimposing a written word on the image. In this case, the clip model recognized the word superimposed image is iPod. This task performance looks like a good sign. That is, this looks as if the clip model acquired human-like uh, task performance. 
But uh, there are many, many possibilities that the different uh, mechanisms uh, from humans produce the, the, the task performance just similar to humans. So to understand what underlying mechanism uh, mediate uh, picture water interference in machines, we import methodology from human cognitive science literatures. Specifically, we introduce a paradigm to evaluate uh, picture water interference uh, while controlling semantic relationships between the superimposed words and the images. In the experiment, an agent uh, has to, uh, the machine agent uh, has to predict the image category for word superimposed image. Our dataset consists of a mixture of uh, natural image datasets and the hierarchical uh, superordinate basic word labels. Our benchmark test is a two by two block design. One condition is the classification task type, indicating what is the image category level to be answered. The other condition is the superordinate, uh, the superimposed was, uh, uh, sorry, the, the other condition is a superimposed word category levels subordinate or basic. So combining these two, there are four conditions. First, the superordinate image classification for the superordinate word embedding. So in this case, answer is uh, the superordinate category animal, and then uh, this is uh, presented uh, with the superordinate category word electronic. And the basic image category, uh, basic image classification for the superordinate word embedding. So in this case, the answer is basic category doc, and then uh, uh, the image is presented uh, with the superordinate uh, category word. And the superordinate image classification for the basic word embedding, and the basic image classification for the basic word embedding. By using our benchmark test, we can test whether language bias decision happens across different object category levels. And uh, to what extent picture word interference depends on the semantic similarity between the superimposed words and the images. And whether a model has a common semantic representation uh, like human for superimposed words and the images. I will explain how we can evaluate these three points by showing the experiment of the clip evaluation. In the experiment, the clip image encoder input the images, uh, uh, the, the, the word uh, uh, superimposed images and output the image, the representation vectors, and then text uh, label changes uh, with a classification task or superordinate or basic label. And then uh, we combined uh, this label with a prompt sentence. In this case, a photo of a label and created uh, the classifier. And the compute uh, which uh, label was uh, closest uh, to the image, class uh, image representations. And uh, first, we evaluated uh, the label switching rate, uh, which refer to how many predictions for word superimposed images are switched from the prediction for original no word images. Here, I again show the stimulus condition of the uh, classification task superordinate basic and then superimposed words are superordinate and then basic. So SS, uh, BS, SB, B, B uh, correspond to the uh, condition, uh, condition names. And this is a result of a label switching rate. Results show that uh, when the classification type is consistent uh, with superimposed word category, that is, uh, uh, SS uh, condition and the BB conditions. The clip model uh, switched the original classification with a very high rate. And when the classification type is different uh, from the superordinate, uh, the, the superimposed word category, the classification label don't include the, exactly the same word uh, uh, as in the superimposed ones. So in this case, uh, the answer uh, Answer is doc, uh, sorry, uh, the, the, in this case, uh, the uh, 
basic uh, level uh, is uh, superimposed, but uh, no uh, exact word uh, in the uh, uh, list of uh, label list of uh, the superordinate categories. Uh, even under these conditions, uh, the clip model showed a large number of uh, label switching uh, for what superimposed images. So the finding suggests that the language bias classification in the clip model happened even across different object category levels. And this task performance uh, looks uh, human-like a little. But when we analyze more what kind of images have uh, produced a label switching, we found that label switching uh, did not depend on the semantic relationships between the images and words. Specifically, by using a pre-trained uh, Wadubek uh, -Bec model, we calculated the semantic similarity between the superimposed words and the image labels. If label switching depends on the semantic relationships like humans, the semantic similarity should have increased for the level switched conditions. But as you can see, all results were not. These results suggest that some untangled processing mediated in the picture word interference in the clip model. To understand what happened here, we imported another evaluation tool from the cognitive neuroscience literature. It's called representational similarity analysis. In the literature on neuroscience, even if people have the same stimulus data set, it's hard to collect data from the same metrics and apparatus. For example, some use only monkey with cell, uh, cell recording and some use only humans with fMRI. So from the demand to compare uh, different domains like human versus monkey, fMRI versus uh, cell recordings, or humans versus computational models, uh, our neuroscience uh, researcher, Nicholas Krieg Scott, suggested uh, using stimulus by stimulus dissimilarity matrix within each domain. Specifically, when you have data set of, uh, for example, when you have the, the data set of faces and houses, you can calculate all the image by image dissimilarity matrix within each domain. And then by comparing uh, this dissimilarity matrix across different domains, you can analyze what kind of functional representations each domain has. For example, by using this analysis, it has been shown that uh, irrespective of monkeys and humans, the brain area related to the object recognition source, uh, shows a uh, similar dissimilarity matrix according to object category. Uh, for example, uh, uh, similar, uh, you can find a similar cluster for the faces and the houses uh, irrespective of uh, humans and monkeys. Actually, our image data set was the same as used in the neuroscience uh, literature. So we analyzed uh, what kind of functional representation can be found in the clip image encoder. Specifically, we first input the original image with no word to the image encoder and then output uh, the image representation vectors. And then like in previous works, we calculated the image by image uh, the, the dissimilarity matrix. This figure showed the results and the images, images are ordered according to the superordinate categories. Diagonal line uh, show the same image pair, so the most uh, similar values uh, the, the, due to the same images. And you can find the square clusters uh, according to the superordinate categories uh, with uh, lower dissimilarity. This, uh, this is like uh, the category specific response uh, reported in the neuroscience literatures. But when you compute uh, the dissimilarity matrix between the images with no word and then images with a word like animal or person, such category clusters disappear. If the clip image encoder process the written word semantically similar to the image category, 
the results should have shown some category specific enhancement. For example, the uh, sorry, the no label here, but the uh, animal specific enhancement and then person specific enhancement. But irrespective of adding words, the representational dissimilarity patterns are similar to each other. In addition, we calculated that dissimilarity matrix for the images with the same superimposed words, so for example, animal versus animal or person versus person. Then we found the overall similarity enhancement and then not selective to superimposed word categories. That is uh, overall color is uh, more greener than the original one. That is uh, overall uh, similarity enhancement. And then the, again, the dissimilarity patterns are similar between the uh, animals and uh, person words. These findings suggest that the creep image encoder represents a superimposed was semantically different from visual images. For example, a written doc is semantically different from a visual doc image. To summarize, we could evaluate what kind of a functional representation the clip model acquires. When the clip image encoders creates the representations for the input image, the semantics of written words and images are separately represented and strongly biased to written words, which is different from humans. We don't still have uh, the conclusive, uh, conclusive evidence about how to match the text and the image encoder outputs, but uh, one possibility is that uh, classifier space by the text encoder is uh, high enough to match the both of the separate representations uh, of images and the words, and then, of course, uh, strongly biased to words. So this is why you see the language bias image classification in the clip, uh, even uh, underlying mechanism are different, quite different from humans. Okay, and then back to the summary slide. Uh, from this uh, work, I would like to uh, uh, suggest to be careful when you evaluate your task performance in your, in your experiment. Uh, uh, as I sh show on today, uh, task performance uh, doesn't always imply a specific mechanism state. So if you tune to a specific task too much, the model may become uh, far from your goal of uh, general uh, artificial intelligence. That's all, thank you.